Rule number one, have fun, all right? It's not fun unless you're having fun, all right? Number two, Stefan put me onto this rule right here, and that's the fact that as in the organization, especially, especially commission only, door to door, you need to set standards. That's important, because if there's no standards, there's no structure, there's no model to go after, then anybody could just do anything and it'll be okay. It's important to set standards. More importantly than that, it's important to call people out on their bullshit. When a leader who you know is a top producer is over here only producing one sale a week, now you have a standard to hold them accountable to. That's important because if you just let it be without holding him accountable to a certain standard, then it'll be okay. And your organization will always be forever mediocre. It won't ever be excellent because there's no excellent standard. Okay. So rule number one, have fun. Rule number two, you want to make sure you set a standard and hold people accountable to that. Okay. Now, how to build a strong team. Rule number three, this is something that actually works really well for me. You always want to create like a competitive environment because whether you believe it or not, you're in a competition right now. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you're in a competition right now. There's a scoreboard. There's opponents. You're either going to look really good or you're going to look really bad. And it's all merit-based. It's all up to you, you know? So you know, on my team, what I like to do especially on road trips. I love road trips for the fact being that I'm so in control of my guys in, in the sense that they could wake up all at the same time. We're all hitting the field at the same time. So I'm, I'm visually with them. So they can't really like, oh, yeah, I'm hitting the field hard. I'm, I'm visually making sure that they are. But creating a competitive environment as the element of like, a, like you kind of feel like an athlete. And I know a lot of you that have played sports, you know that when you're playing a game, you go all out. Right, you don't hold it back. In practice, you might not go as hard, which makes sense. But when you're in the game, when it's game day, you're going all out, balls to the wall. So I like call, I like calling out um, some of the top guys on my team when I'm on a road trip, specifically like Speedy. I'll, I'll go up and tell them, Speedy, I'm gonna kick your ass this week. I'm gonna go for eight, and he's like, Oh yeah? Well, uh, I'm gonna go for nine. And I'm like, All right, I'm getting ten then. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's like that and then you one starts scoring the other one starts scoring and then you just start creating that little competition within the two you know it's it's a friendly competition but it benefits both parties because win or lose if you're giving it your all in a, in a commission only environment you're gonna you know benefit from it um my last tip because i have four tips for you guys my last one that i think just to keep it simple really helps build a strong team is just keep in mind that whenever a, a rep is falling off, a rep is dying, a rep is like starting to slowly digress, it's important to like pick him back up and help him get his momentum back. And I, I know as a leader, especially when you have a lot of reps, your time is like really strained out. But uh, it's really important, Gary Vee says that it's really important to have people close to the sun close to the source of heat because when they start getting cold you warm them right back up by being close to the sun that's what gary v says so use that analogy whenever there's like a a rep that you feel is like falling off and you really care about the guy hit the field with them i'm not i'm not afraid to hit the field with my guys you know like i'll do that all day of the week if i have to but that's the four keys all right i'm gonna go over it one more time just so you can retain it a little bit better one have fun and also like You'll, you'll hear different things from different leaders. Some people say, oh, don't party with the reps. Don't you know, like go go to clubs with your reps. Don't go to bars or anything like that. I have a little bit of a different viewpoint just because I've seen so much success from my, you know, the things that I've been using, my recipe for success, right? It's okay to have fun with them. Just don't get um, destroyed in front of your reps. That's obviously not a good thing. You don't want to go overboard with the, uh, the fun because just how just how easy it is to have fun is really easy to go overboard. So number two, you got to set the standards. You got to call them out on their fucking bullshit, okay? You got a, a freaking leader on your team. He just got promoted. He's only hitting one sale a week. You got to call him out on his bullshit. That's not acceptable, 
Number three, create a competitive environment. You need that. And number four, when they're cold, you bring them to the source, meaning you, you're the sun, okay? So that's literally like just the, the quick four things that works for me and my team, okay? My team is called Dark Side, and I think we're pretty kick-ass, and so does payroll sheets. <laughs> so anyways, my next part of this whole presentation I got for you guys. G Money, why would you want to build a team? Why is it important? Why can't I just be a rep? My comp plan increase. Why not just make sales for myself? So my answer to keep it extremely simple is the word, the phrase more money. More money, right? Is that not what we're all here for? Commission only. Like all you guys on this call, we're all money hungry, right? Maybe we don't love money. I, like, I, I refuse to say that I love money, but I really enjoy what it brings me, you know? <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> so um, let me give you some background. I got hired on by this company in 2018. During that time, I was going through, uh, I got laid off in my real estate job, and I was looking for something that would make me six figures, right? Because I was, I was making about six figures in my last one, so I was like, all right, I need to. Yeah, you know, only make something that's gonna make more money. Out of like the six job offers that I like the most, I like this one the most because it made me feel like, like it was more like a family, fun, team oriented kind of thing. The other ones felt more like you're really against other people, <laughs> which is cool, but I like that team environment. But now I say that to say this, as soon as they mentioned that there's a team building aspect in the interview, I was all in. I was like, bro, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I want to build a team. That's like my number one goal. As soon as I got into the field, I was like, bro, how do I build a team? That's what I want to do. Now, you, you're probably like, why are you so excited on building a team? But what's so important? So we all know that to get rich, you need passive income. Like, there's no getting around it. You need it in some way or another. You, you need to make money passively. If not, you're just going to be working till you die. When you stop working, the money stops working. So when you build a team, you get passive income. And it might sound like, oh, some hocus pocus shit that's not for you. But when you start seeing the override checks and you start realizing that this shit is freaking legit and there's override passive income coming to you, you're going to be like, holy smokes, why wasn't I a leader earlier? I should have been building a team last year. You know, you're going you're to think like that. I was, I was in the beach on Saturday. I, it was like, I don't know, it was like 2 p.m. I was with my girl. I was with Dark Side Diego. And I was just listening, watching the chat. Just bing, bing, bing. And I was over here chilling. Uh, we, were, we were drinking stuff. And then I just, I was really reflecting on life. And I was like, wow, I really just made like a, like 175 bucks just being here with you guys. <laughs> and, it, and it was one of those like, really awesome moments where you just like reflect on life and you're like yeah life is good you know so you can't get that if you don't got a team man so you should highly highly value the concept of replicating yourself and building a team because one it's fun it's fun because now you have like a little squad you're like hell yeah my, my little my little army my empire you know that's, that's kind of what it feels like but two you start getting that passive income and making money while you're not even, you know, not even working necessarily. Um, so let's move forward. Why should you want to get a team? I kept mentioning passive income, but my second step, not only passive income, this is going to get your income to the next level. You're making, let's say thousand dollar a week checks, right? Thousand dollar a week checks working your, uh, with just your sales. That's all right. Total total it up, it equals fifty thousand a year. That's for me. That's fucking boring. Fifty thousand a year. I'm, dude, what am I doing? Now check this shit out. Adding the team aspect to it will make you go from fifty thousand to a year to eighty to a hundred thousand a year, real quickly too. You don't even need a big ass team to do that shit. I asked Mo, what's my what did my payroll come out to last week? All right. What did my payroll come out to last week? Mo, what was the answer? $3,000. Peanut. $3,000, yeah. Um, and to be to be real, I did work last week, 
But there was a couple of days I had to take off because I'm there's a lot of housekeeping shit I gotta do around the house. So that's why I, I didn't even post up my goal because I didn't want to like you know work two days and not hit it. So you saw two days of work and my check came out to three thousand dollars. If you if you're telling me that kind of money won't change your life, I don't know what to tell you, my friend. <laughs> but number three, and this is really important, and I'm learning a lot from this whole experience of being a leader, is that it's a whole nother skill set being sales rep in comparison to being sales leader. You know, you could be a good sales rep, but now being a good leader, that's a whole different level. That's a whole different level of skill. And uh, it's a skill that any organization will value. So I encourage you guys highly to, you know, take your position extremely seriously, whether that's um, you're barely starting out as a team leader or you're barely up there as a leader now, take it real serious and try to make the most out of it. Maximize the opportunity because you could go from 50,000 a year to 100,000 a year real quick. Your team doesn't even have to be that big for you to do that. To make it even easier, CMC is producing leaders, I mean, not leaders, new reps every week for you guys now, right? So all you got to do is when the time comes, you got to be ready. If your partner says, hey, Vivian, are you ready to take out somebody new today? You got to say, yes, sir, let's get it. If, uh, if there's new guys in the LA region and they're next to your crib and whatever, and you feel like you're ready, I encourage you to take that leap of faith and just go out there and start training. One, it's going to develop you as a leader. Two, you're going to gain experience. Three, now you start developing that passive income, and that's going to really increase you to the next level. And when you're at the next level, it's almost like anything under that feels a little less. Like, I'm used to $3,000 a week checks now. Now, if I don't get that, I feel uncomfortable. Now, to some of you, it's like, Wow, but three thousand dollars in a week? I've never even considered or fathomed that in my lifetime. But yes, yes, I've only been here since 2018 in April, and I mean, I'm where I'm at now, and I can only imagine where it's gonna get going. I don't know if you guys have ever been to this, uh, to like a conference, like a like a conference for these companies that are like uh, network marketers. A lot of you probably have. Some of you probably haven't. But just to paint you some context and some background picture on these conferences, um, like, for example, I've been to one that's from Primerica. Primerica is a company that sells life insurance. However, they have a very pyramid-like structure. Um, and, like, it's really, I don't know, it's kind of weird, this, these pyramid scheme kind of companies. But uh, I've been to a conference of theirs, and they got agents flying in from all over the United States. And they're all at this one venue, and you look around, there's like 500,000 people around you. And I'm like, what the hell? That's a lot of people. But in terms of like the bigger picture, this company, CMC, I envision it becoming something like that, where you got agents coming from uh, Minnesota, Washington, California, New York, Florida, Texas, all flying into this like ceremony. I, I, can, I can already envision this. So that excites me. We're really early on in the whole grand scheme of things this is only year number four or five for cmc right so with that being said it's like a land grab of opportunity you could cry, climb up the ladder really quickly right like if you're already a leader what's next you got a team leader then you got what partner right you want to be a partner you want to have that proximity and he always talks about that that proximity you want to hang out with the winners it's cool hanging around with everybody else, but you want to invest your time on the winners because they say that you are the five people you associate yourself with the most. Whether you believe it or not, it's just a fact of life. That's just how it is. If you associate with millionaires, you're going to be the fifth one. If you associate with people that have low goals and that don't try hard at work, you're going to be the fifth one. All right? So keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to leave you guys with one last piece of advice. Ready? I don't think you guys are ready for this. 
always have fun. <laughs> that's the that's the number one thing, bro. You take take your job very seriously, but always have fun. Always have fun with it. People are going to stick around longer if your team is fun, okay? That's pretty much what I got for you guys. Now, very similarly, uh, Ken, he's going to give his two cents on how to build a strong team and then the bigger picture of it all. Ken, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Can you guys okay, see me? Cool. Thank you, Gio. Thank you, thank you. All right, there so before, I know I know this an hour meetings um, is very long, especially when you're sitting down. That's why if you notice I'm walking back and forth because I don't know about you guys. Sitting gives me low energy, and I'm, I'm an active person, so I like to move around, things like that. So do me a favor. Why don't you guys stretch a little bit? Give me some energy, man. Let's stretch a little bit. Wake yourself up. Come on, Vivian. <laughs> Are you yeah. driving? Is that what? Okay, don't stretch. Don't stretch. Don't try. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hand on the steering wheel. All right. Ken, Ken. Hey, just Carlos? to add on to that. Huh? I heard I heard that just to add on to that, like if you um if you sit down, you die two times faster versus standing up. Well you ever yeah. heard that? I heard a lot about that, about how walking at like minutes to your life and things like that. And you know, that, yeah. that means like I said, I'm gonna live to a hundred, right? Because I, I walk a lot and the field definitely helped with that. <laughs> if you're doing the right thing, you'll, you'll do at least a mile or two a day, right? <laughs> right, right? All right. Thank you, Gio. Those are some really gems right there that Gio dropped. You know, th this is a really big topic, to be quite honest with you. Look, I woke up like since 6 in the morning trying to think what to give you guys, right? And I have 30 minutes to do it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit challenging because when we talk about building a team, um, there's a lot of dynamic that goes into it. Um, so I'll give you some, um, the one thing that's dear to my heart, um, the first book I ever read um, in sales was a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, who read that book, all right? And then the second book I read is called The 360 Leader by John Maxwell, right? It talks a lot about leadership and things like that. In that book, John Maxwell talks um, and he used uh, Jesus Christ himself as like the center of focus or the example of leadership, right? So before I wasn't Christian, but it, it makes sense to me. So even though I wasn't Christian at the time, the principle and things like that uh, was solid, right? Everything he was saying was like true to me. It was just like I was like awakened in a sense, right? Um, there's one thing that stick out between those two individuals. So Del Carnegie, if you guys don't know who he is, Del Carnegie is, you know, it's amazing. Back in 1900s, he interviewed countless millionaires from um, Rockefellers and titans of that, that time. Uh, at those times, if you would compare net income, these individuals that he interviewed are actually more wealthier than Jeff Bezos himself, right? So, and in that interview, he spent about over a decade interviewing successful people, trying to extract what really works for them, right? And what it means to be a good leader. And John Maxwell spent three decades now understanding, dissecting leadership, and he goes speaks at IBM and Microsoft and, you know, train people on leadership, right? Um, but the one thing that they all have in common is, is this phrase right here, is people don't care what you know until they know you care, right? What does that mean? It sounds cliche, but what, what does it really mean, right? So, you know, I've had 15 years of experience building several teams, and every team is different. Every team is different because the people is different, right? So like Gio mentioned, like sometimes he hear other leaders say certain things, but then he's doing something differently. But then all of a sudden, but then there's no dispute that Gio is very successful. If you guys don't know, Gio was our first um, outside recruit. You know, CMC is, is created with Andy, myself, and my wife, Joanna. And it was all family, friends, and the amigos, right, Dre? It was just pretty much, <laughs> you know, a few a few people that was at and other vendors that decided to start with us. And we have pretty much a team of about 10 people, just friends, hanging out, right? It's almost like a frat, right? And to be honest, during that time, I know what matters to my people, right? I know what my people want, right? I know... As a leader, the first thing you must do is understand what your people is all about. I mean, that's that's number one, right? What I mean by that? Well, you got to understand their blueprint, right? Um, the first thing, if you don't know already as a leader, is you need to know what their whys are, 
Why, why is that important, Stefan? Why is it important to know what your people why why's are and why they're here? I feel, I feel it's important so you know um, you know how to help them hit those hit their goals. Exactly. Exactly. What what is another reason, Dre, that is important for you to know why your people is here? Because you kind of know what drives them and what what they're working for, and by knowing their why, you you get to really understand what their values are. I guess um, what the reps' value is. Exactly, exactly. That's why you guys are successful. You understand that basic concept, right? So I'm always mindful in terms of giving advice in a public setting like this because depending on the person, I may be giving the wrong advice, right? Let me explain what I mean. Right. If you were to tell someone like me back in the days when I was working in the field to work harder, if my coach tells me that, he would be telling me the wrong thing. You know, why do I say that? Because, you know, if you guys don't know me, when I was in the field, I was working six or seven days a week. I pretty much put my life on hold, no relationship, no girlfriends, right? Like, I, I would not even give a girl a second date. Um, that's how serious I was about my opportunity, right? It's like, it's like, you must be wifey or you gotta be worth my time because right now I'm trading 10 years of my life, right? To develop a team, to better myself so that I can get to a level where I can work from home, right? And have that financial freedom for, for my kids, right? That's how I think, right? So to me, if you were to tell me five years ago to work harder, what you are saying is pretty much, you know, you, you're gonna really screw me up. Right, because if I'm working six, seven days a right, and I'm reading books and I'm developing, I'm with my team all the time. You tell me to work harder. That's the that's the wrong advice, right? That's that's an advice you want to give someone that's like, you know, working four days a week, right? And because they're so talented, they're spending three days partying and then getting wasted on the weekends and then come back with a hangover. That's the advice you give that person. Does that make sense, guys? So like, it's important when you're when you're a leader to know who your people are because the advice that you give might not pertain to that person, like. The biggest mistake I ever made as a leader was I was giving advice that pertained to me, right? Like my advice would go something like this. Hey, you know, you got to spend time with your people and you got to develop a relationship, right? Why do I give that advice? I give that advice because when I was at UPS, you know, and I remember at UPS, I was like the, I was a very good supervisor. I was there for five years and within four months, I was able to get promoted to supervisors. And if you guys don't know UPS, when you get to supervisor, uh, UPS have a program where they actually pay for your college tuition, right? So I got there fairly quickly, and I remember striving to be like the supervisor of the month, supervisor of the year, supervisor um, of that year was the title I wanted. And every freaking year, man, I never win that freaking position, right? I always was second to this guy named Hong Lam. I was second, even though I worked the hardest, I set the right example, I was buff, right? I was doing like three times the work ethic as everybody else. I was coming in early, I was prepping my territory, all this stuff, but I was second to long, to Hong. You know, I didn't understand at the time, I was so frustrated. I was like, it must be favoritism. He was there longer, you know, he's just likable. So, you know, it, it's just, it's just, it's just UPS. It's just the system is rigged, right? And that's how I, I, I thought at the time. When I reflect back, you know, so two, two type of leader, right? The leader I was before when I was working at UPS, this was about 19 to 24. I was, you know, setting the right example. I was a high performer. I didn't take any BS, right? I lead by example. I work hard, all these things, right? And then you have this other leader that, you know, he, he set the pace. He comes in early. He does the right thing. But what Hong does that was very impressive is very similar to Stefan. Right. He played basketball with his, uh, his team. Right. He invite his team to his house. Right. He knows his people so well that. You know. When Hong asks for a, a favor, they deliver. And then when when I ask for my people favor, 50 percent of them are just like you can do it yourself. You're so good at it. <laughs> well, you go out there and lift that heavy box. And that's what I do. I just end up doing the work. Right. What am I trying to tell you guys, you think? What's the importance of that story? Relationship building. 
Right. Just like John Maxwell and Doug Cornegate says, right, relationship matters most. You got to know your people, right? So although I was doing everything right, right, and as a leader, you got to do that. Don't dismiss this and say, don't do the right thing. Don't set an example. That's not what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is that what's going to propel you to the next level is your understanding of your people. You got to understand your people's why, right? What what tick, what make Andy tick is totally different than what make Stevens tick, right? What motivate Dre is going to be different than what motivates Stefan, right? People have different backgrounds. So, you know, as a leader, you must know that. If you don't know that, you won't get a lot out of your people. And then you're just spinning your wheel. You can get very frustrated very fast, right? So it's important that as a new leader, guys, first of all, you know, congratulations, you guys made it, right? It, it shows that you guys are able to sell the customer. That's why you graduate to leadership, right? You're able to influence the customer. You're able to take a customer from who are you to, all right, I'll sign up, I like you. That's a very important skill because that's the foundation of leadership. That's step one, though. <laughs> so if you think you made it because you're a great sales guy, it's actually step one in the leadership game. But it is a skill that you must have. Does that make sense? So what is the leadership game? What is step two, right? Step two in leadership is strengthening that skill, the ability to influence someone from, you know, I'm just doing my work and my own business, and all of a sudden some guy came in and influenced me to get a sale. That's good, right? The next step is, how do I influence someone's psychology? How do I get someone from A to B and then C and D? So leadership is powerful, guys, because leadership is all about growth. You know, why am I excited about developing leaders? Because I have a massive freaking dream, right? And if you guys know me, I'm relentless when it comes to my goals and dreams. I always get it, right? Not that I get every goal that I focus on. But the main one I focus on, I get because I'm relentless. And right now, guys, we're at a position where, you know, the cliche said the sky's the limit, right? Well, the sky is the limit for CMC, right? Let me share a little bit of something about with, with you guys last week, right? Last week, I had four calls with four vendors, right? If you guys don't know sales, sales is an industry that is recession proof. Why do you think sales is an industry that's recession proof? Uh, new leaders, not partners, somebody that, just give me your opinion. Why do you think sales is a recession proof industry? Let's go Vivian. Oh, can you repeat the question? The, the question is, why do you think sales is a recession free industry? I mean, in other words, yeah, like regardless why? of what happens to the economy, regardless of what how many people get laid off, why is the industry of sales always going to be desired? Because sales is basically like the basis of every business. Without the, the sales force is the last one to leave when a business goes down. So basically, we're the most important part of a business. We're what brings in profit. We're what, what's going to uh, keep the business alive. Like, we're the last ones to go. Is that it? <laughs> Steven, I don't know where you found her, man. You got to keep her. She, she's a smart one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly it, guys. Like, you know, like I tell the back office, the back office had a rude awakening uh, during this pandemic because they realized that they really realized that their well-being, their well-being is. The office have a rude awakening during this pandemic because they they realized they finally hit them like a like a brick, right? That that their job is dependent upon us upon the amount of sales that we get. You know, I try to tell the office, guys, you know, I, I can only hire people back as sales comes into the company. So how how fast, you know, the determination in terms of when I hire people back determine how many sales we get, right? And all, com all, all companies in the United States is going through this right now. Sales is always the first, comp the first uh, department or the first sector of a business that is always going to be desired. Like if you master sales and you become a good, great salesperson, A, B, when you upgrade to become a person that can develop more sales reps and, and improve your leadership skill where you can multiply yourself, it doesn't matter where you go from there. 
you will earn six figure plus. And the better you get at leadership, the better you get at developing teams, the better you get at getting people to grow and, and, and increasing their um, abilities, the more you earn. Does that make sense? Like Gio was saying, you know, he got overrides uh, when he was um, doing errands and things like that for his personal personal life and he still still got override does that make sense guys yes all right okay so i feel like i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm giving you guys a lot um you know but just to re-emphasize you know the first thing you need to do as a leader is understand your people three things you need to understand about your people their why right what upset them what make them tick you know in terms of what motivates them right some people get motivated differently right like Steven, for example, Steven liked talking smack. It's not my style. It's not my style. You know, it's like it's uncomfortable for me to talk smack to him, right? Because I, I don't like people talk smack to me. I get offended, right? <laughs> but Steven <laughs> loved it. Steven loved it. He loved competition, right? So then how you get across to Steven is not by motivating him, pumping him up, you know, it'll be challenging him. Like Steven, I did three. What's up with you? Can you ever do three, right? And then Steven will freaking snap, go to the field and get four. Does that make sense? You need to know that about your people, right? Who here understand what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. All right, all right, cool. So I was talking about like, you know, work at UPS and you know, this, this supervisor named Hong, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like forever, Grateful for that man because he taught me a valuable lesson in terms of how to build a relationship and how powerful that is, right? It actually trumps even setting the example when it comes to leadership. Right now, setting the example is important because you inspire, but in leadership, your main objective and your main goal, your main responsibility is to get your people better. Right? How strong you are as a leader is reflected upon your people. You know, and Right now, I'm, I'm like, it, it, it goes the same thing with raising kids, you know, like, uh, you know, don't take it offensively, you know, but it's, it, it, it's, it's a correlation between developing a strong team and raising kids, right? It's a strong correlation because what happened is what, what goes on in your team and what goes on with your kids upbringing is a direct reflection on you. What, what do you think I mean by that? What do you think I mean by that, Gio? It's because uh, th th that whole like student teacher relationship, um, the, the student in that regard has like a huge impactability by the leader. So, like they, whatever you mold them to be, that's what they initially innate become. You know, that's why. Thank you, thank you very much. So here, here's why I love about leadership, right? Like. The name of the game in life is about being better, right? If, if you guys haven't, uh, uh, you know, realized that yet, that's the facts. How how much you make now in terms of financially, you will make more when you get better, right? And depending on the industry, you know, your skills need to be focused on different things. In our industry, the skills that you must master is people development. You must know and understand how to take someone from average to great. Right, bad to good, great to excellent. Right, that that's that's the name of the game. That's what that's what pays the big bucks. Does that make sense? So let's think about that for a second. So here's here's what I love about leadership. Okay, so I was frustrated with my kids. I've been teaching them since there's no school, so I'm pretty much the teacher, right? So I would get off. At four o'clock and from four to five, I'm like the teacher. Man, that was challenging, man. <laughs> I was like, I would rather, I would rather go to the field with you guys. I would rather, you know, rebuild team all over again, right? Then, then teach my three year old and my five year old ABC and one to 10, right? Because it was so challenging, so challenging because they're not used to me being the, high standard dad you know i'm the dad that spoiled the crap out of my kids right because i work hard i come home and the way i get their attention is i give them toys i take them to, 
to places. You know, I pick them up. I spend 30 minutes playing with them. I'm like the, you know, I'm the, I'm the, uh, the fun parent. You know what I mean? And so when I became a teacher, it's quite different because then they realized, dang, dad got some high standards. Like I got to know my ABCs. And I got to know I want a 20, right? And my wife see this different side of me with the kids because to me, it's like work is on. You know, I'm back on work coach mode. You know, so it's a different me, right? <laughs> and they were like, in, in for a rude awakening. One thing that I realized about my kid was that, man, I spoiled the shit out of them. It was like a parent when I tried to teach them and then they didn't want to listen to me, right? So what does right away like the first the first week I realized oh shoot like the way the way I'm raising them I'm not doing them a favor right if if they think that they can just you know go to school and then not listen to their teacher or like not respect me when I'm telling them to do something they're gonna they're gonna fail in school you know <laughs> it's like, it's, I was like stressed out because I'm like oh shit my kids don't know A to Z and one to ten and have a horrible attention span I also want to play all the time I'm like oh shoot you know, and then I, th I thought about it, like, what did I do to cause that? And then I start, everything start um, making sense, right? In terms of how I condition them to do it. In your team, you're gonna encounter the same thing. What's gonna happen is you're gonna feel frustrated at something that your team is doing. And then you realize that it's because you caused it. Let me give you an example. So I went, I went to two spectrum. When I was building a team at UPS, I was too strict, not fun. All procedures, all rules, all regulation. I was the number two supervisor, got beat by the number one, right? So what, what I caused there was my people can't relate to me. Since I'm always the top dog, I'm always setting the pace, I'm always the best, they feel like they can never measure up. So, so instead of getting their buy-in, what, what happened there was I started to get pushback. They, they started to feel envious of me. I wasn't, I wasn't developing them. I was actually making them feel inferior to me, right? So that's what happened when you set too much of the pace and you, you become too much of a production leader, right? On the other end, I went the other side and, you know, I went clubbing my, 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 my team. I went, I, I remember the team at Verizon, I would take my team to Vegas, right? And I would get them, you know, if they hit a certain uh, production goal, right? I would take them to Vegas and I would buy them a VIP table, right? I, I show these guys from, they're about 18 to 22. They've never been to Vegas before, right? And all of a sudden their boss treat them to like a VIP, right? And then all the girls are approaching them. Man, it lit me up, it lit me up, right? But then I got smashed. I got smashed. I couldn't handle my alcohol, right? One alcohol became two. Before you know it, it's four in the morning and I'm wasted throwing up in front of my guys, right? What do you think happened to, to, to those guys, let's say months later, when, when now they, they, it's Friday night and they're partying and they come back on a Monday hang, like with a hangover? Who do you think caused that? You. You, right? And who do you think caused the other side when I was at UPS being so strict and rigid that my people don't want to come and, and share their problems and stuff with me because they feel inferior to me? Who caused that? It's always on the leader, Ken. It's always on the lead. That's what I love about leadership because, like, my kids, they're, they're going to they're gonna be a reflection of me. Now, I know they have free will, so therefore it's not all on me. But when they're not little, everything I do have a, a, a cause and effect, you know? So if you look at your team and you become a student of evaluating what's going on with your team, you'll know exactly what you need to do as a leader to improve that. You follow what I'm saying? That's just a balance. There's nothing hard about it. It's just like if you if you party too much, you'll know because your people will be Monday like with a hangover and they don't want to, they won't make the call. That's how you know you, you're going too far on the fun side. You need to go back to, Send that example and leading in the front, right? If you're leading in the front too much and all of a sudden nobody's calling you, right? That means you're not having fun. You're being a being an a hole probably, right? And they don't want to be with you because they feel like, you know, they can't have fun. Does that make sense, guys? So I, I want to leave like the last ten minutes, I guess, for Q and A because, you know, there's so much about leadership. I I just think that the first the first thing that you must know about leadership is understand your people. 
right? And I can't emphasize it enough. So I gave you some example so that you guys can um, go off of and just understand that what's happening with your team and what's happening with an individual, just put a mirror to your face and see what you, what you did to cause that. Because a lot of time, because you're, you're in a position of leadership and they respect you, you know, a lot of stuff that you do is, is causing the reaction and it's causing your team to perform a certain way, right? And, and if your team is doing great, you're doing the right thing. So if your team is doing great, what you want to do is just write it all down, what the heck you're doing that, that time period to make sure that you remember that. It's as important as for you to track your success. It's as important for you to track your failures. Does that make sense? So when you're, when you're successful and you're like kicking butt and everything is running on all cylinders, you're developing leaders, you're hitting productions and all that, like dissect it, write it all down. What, what, what actually caused that effect? What did you do at that period of time to yield that result, right? And just um, it, it'll be a good reference for you just in case you fall off and lost momentum, you can go back to that and study. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. So for new leaders, anybody at all, what can I help you guys with? You know, for the last 10 minutes, I want to get some Q&A, you know, be a little personal so that way I'm not just going over a topic that may not pertain to you. What do you guys want to know? How can I take you from here to the next level, right? Hey, Ken. This is yes. Hugo. Hey, Hugo. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Uh, I, I think something that I struggled with is, uh, for example, this last week, uh, I, had going, I had a lot going on in my personal life. My, my mom was really sick. And um, what's it called? It's kind of put like a damper on my mood and I'm trying to get out of the funk. So I guess my question to you would be like, how do you, how do you get out of that funk and into the rhythm again? That's a great question. Actually, that's number two in terms of what a, a leader does, right? So you know this answer, Hugo. So let me ask you, when a customer is mad and pissed off, what do you do to get the customer have you ever had a customer that's mad and upset with at and and then you somehow transition them and get, get them to get a sale? Yeah, I usually let them vent and then uh, kind of understand and relate with them and then kind of transition it into, into the sales pitch again. Okay, so what, what do you do to navigate them to, to the sale? What, what you, so you listen, you let them vent, and then what do you do? Um, well, I, I mean, I... I whatever they told me to kind of relate to how other people have felt and uh, kind of like the, the felt feel and um, strategy that, that we got to use. But, um, but yeah, that's usually how I transition. So I just, I let them vent. I relate. Um, I make them feel like others have, have felt the same way. And then I usually transition. And when you transition, what do you have them focus on? On on the outcome of what I'm trying to, to give them, the solution. The solution the, and the outcome, the solution, right? Yeah, the solution to their problem. Awesome. Yeah, just take your own advice, Hugo. Okay. Basically, what caused you to be in that state of uh, mind is because, and you know, it's, you can justify it because it's true, right? Your mom is hurt, is sick, and she's in a bad position. So therefore, yeah. it's almost like we're taught to, well, since that happened, I must be sad. So therefore, it's excusable that I won't produce, mm -hmm. right? You know, Tony Robbins always says that you can actually go from sad to happy in a moment. Right. The thing about human being is that we can only focus on one emotion at a time. So have you ever been to a funeral where, you know, it's a, it's a serious thing. It's a very loved, beloved person that passed away, but then all of a sudden you, you see a group of people laughing and sharing stories of, of what, what um, a good time that they had with that person that deceased. Yes. Right. Are they wrong to laugh at a funeral? I mean, they were, they were sad crying at one point. All of a sudden, like the next point, they were like thought of a memory, a uh, happy moment, and they were laughing. What do you think that is? Uh, I think it's, they remember the good times, and uh, there's no point in really dwelling in, in the sadness. You gotta keep moving forward. You're a smart man. Take that advice. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> See what? That's what I mean by we we have the foundation already because you guys are on the call because you guys are able to do sales. You guys are able to influence. That's step one. Not now you got to influence yourself and influence others in, in a bigger way. So you go. The reason why I said that is because I'm not to discount it. It's you you know the answer. You're highly successful. You're a sharp guy, right? Basically, all you have to do is just focus on the things that were that you're working toward and the positive things in your life. Not that you don't care about her. It's just that when you do better, now you can have the money and the resource and you can take care of her later on. Right. Does that make sense? So I would I would focus on that. Okay. I would focus I would focus on that. And if I focus on that, everything else will follow. Cool. Thanks, Ken. No problem. My pleasure. Anybody else, guys? In terms of developing a team, how can I take you guys from this step to the next step? What what what, I, what I can I help you guys with? Or clarify? Hey Ken, I think something that they might be afraid to ask um, is how often should they be expecting DMC to provide like recruits for them so they can start building their teams? All right, so that's that's a great question. Actually, that's uh, that's my focus um, in the next month, right? Because I, I want to make sure that we have the leadership to train first, and then how it's like out there before we ramp up to you know to where we're at. Before prior to the pandemic, we were bringing in four to ten people every single week. So it all depends on the amount of leaders that we have and how comfortable they are going to the field. So I guess the question is, are you guys ready to ramp up recruiting? Yes. Yes. Right? yes. And, and and the question the question is this the real question is are you guys prepared to get to know your people and really get them to the next level right because see the, the thing the thing about the thing about leadership is that there's a big reward that comes from leadership and that's why I love this business because your financial gain is tied to how much you care and invest in your team right and I love that because I like I I would, I would look out for people for free i might as well make money at the same time that's that's my psychology does that make sense i i couldn't i couldn't thrive in corporate america because corporate america is more it's more of like you gotta can somebody mute i still hear like some background noise so in corporate america the system is uh, designed a little differently in corporate america is you work your butt off and then there's like one or two positions that you desire and until that person pass away, get fired or demoted, you're pretty much stuck where you're at. That's why I don't like that system because it's almost like I I, I like my boss, but at the same time I want to take his job, <laughs> right? So there's there's a, there's a, a, a it just doesn't make sense the way I think, right? So the the way this is structured, this is why I like network marketing too, is that it's structured in a way where when you win and you develop others, they win. And actually, it's my job for you to take my job. <laughs> That's the cool thing, right? Um, you know, I think I kind of got sidetracked off of what the four people I spoke to, right? I kind of didn't touch on that. So I want to touch on that since we have about three minutes. Here's what's the cool thing about uh, the sales industry that we've been answered already. Sales is very important. All these four, four companies that I spoke to last week, they all were like begging for us to sell for them. Like no joke, right? Frontier like apologized. For like wanting so much from us, they, they apologize for asking for the paperwork. They apologize for all kind of stuff. They're like, can can you please come back and represent us, right? And I'm like, I don't know. You're not even trade on the stock exchange. I straight out tell them, I'm like, I'm not sure about your well-being. I don't know if I want to invest my team and put all this effort, right? And you might not be around a few months from now, right? So they actually have to have their their the president of small business and and the guy that was giving us a hard time and his his other boss on the call so that it can explain on a PowerPoint how they're secured and that their bankruptcy is actually just a way of them delivering their debt and that they're here to stay and they have like all these plans. They were sharing me, sharing with me their business plan to make sure we're comfortable working with them again. How freaking awesome is that? That's amazing. Right? And it's because of you guys, right? That's, that's the power of sales. That's the power of leadership, right? And this is why this business is all about developing others because 
I can't fulfill those campaigns if we don't have the right leadership and the right people. So it's all about people development. You guys follow what I'm saying? We're limited to the amount of people that we can grow, but, but that's our limitation. But that limitation can be changed if we focus on developing others. Does that make sense? That's what this call is for. You know, so I'm excited about this call. You know, everybody investing their time, sharing ideals and getting better because the more people we have that's competent, the more campaigns that we can explore. The truth is I have four campaigns that we can do as soon as tomorrow. Will, will I do it? No. Because we don't have the team yet. We don't. I, I want to create a solid, solid foundation for step one is get us to where ourselves was at because I don't want to divert and throw us off of momentum. Does that make sense? But we have Dish. We have a call with Dish, Andy and I, right? And Andy, Dish have been chasing us for like two years, right? Chasing us, like no joke, like this, this, they're relentless. They have to have, they have to bring Amir, which is like the, the main guy in charge of all residential and business. This guy remind me of like Saget. He has like one eye. Okay. From Street Fighter, Saget. He, he has an eye patch. The guy is like, he's like 50, but he's buff. You know, he's like fired the heck up, you know, and he's like a, a motivator. He got Oprah to speak in one of his like revolution convention. They came, flew in. Flew in from New York or some crap like that to meet Andy and myself to pitch why we should work, why our team should sell dish. You know, so so this is the stuff that's happening behind closed. I want you guys. The reason why I'm telling all of you guys this is to make you guys understand the opportunity that's before us. We need more solid people. We need to grow our organization so that we can fulfill their needs in a sense, right? So we're not lacking opportunity, right? We just want to make sure we put our resource in the right place. Right, because we'll only do things that make us the most amount of money. You guys feel me on that? We'll oh, pick yeah. the best campaign that makes the most amount of money. That's the easiest, and that is gonna fan our pocket and grow our team at the rapid pace. Right? That's why we pick Direct TV and AT and T. Why? Well, freak, man. Have you ever seen a freaking promotion like Direct TV right now? No, it's like foolish for us not to do it, right? It's like dumb. Like, look at Viva and like, what are you guys, what are, what's so hard about this BS? You know, I, I, I just got six cells that just started three weeks, you know, <laughs> because Vivian, Vivian, let me, let, me, uh, let me get your testimony real quick. Can you hear me? Are you there? I think you're on mute, Vivian. Okay. Are you, are you on mute? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Vivian, let me ask you. You did a direct TV residential, right? Before? Right. Uh -huh. how, how does that compare to this campaign? Like, just be honest. Is it harder? Is it challenging? No, can you, can you... This, is, uh, this is cakewalk. It's super easy. I, I feel like yeah, I feel like residential is a little bit harder. This is way easier, really simple. Can you give me a few things that make residential harder? How's the credit check on residential? How's the credit check? Right. How um, how many people normally pass on credit check? How, how does that work? Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> you said what? So um, on residential, there's a credit check, right? How often does right. like you work, you spend 20 minutes talking to someone and they don't pass? How, how often does that happen? How, how does that make you feel? Yeah. It, it, sometimes it makes you lose your attitude because, uh, you know, you talk to that person for so long. And I think I will get like at least four uh, credit fails in a day sometime. Um, you know, you could you could possibly close like, let's say five people. And out of those five people that you close, maybe like, uh, you know, you'll have three credit fails sometimes. So it's it's a credit check is really, really strict with residential. This is really easy. Right. So let me clarify that. So we don't have credit check on business to business. You guys, you guys don't understand why, why that is so good. Vivian is saying that she would close five people. And can you imagine closing five people, fill all the paperwork, spending a good two hours, like total, and all of a sudden only one goes through? That's what she's talking about. Right? Thank you, Vivian. That's you so, so this this is something that I don't share with you guys often enough, but let me explain, right? We have a lot of things that we can do, but the reason why we pick the campaigns we're on is because it's the easiest, it makes the most amount of money, you know, and 
when we see better opportunity, we'll go there. But as of right now, there's no other company that does no credit check like Direct TV commercial. You sell a $25 pack and you make hundreds of dollars. That's that's not possible. The residential, the select package costs 60 bucks and they make a hundred dollars. So like those four people that I told you about that we spoke to, you know, it's good to have them, but until they actually can pay us as much and as easy, we're gonna stick with this. Does that make sense, guys? But I just want you guys to know that. I want you guys to understand your value and how important you are and how big this opportunity really is. Cool. Hey Ken. Yes, sir. Are we still running train the trainer on this call? Right after? Yes. Yes, yes, we, we do. Yes, we are. So the people that are taking uh, out new guys, but I don't know if we coordinate that yet. You know, maybe we can pause the Tuesday because we still have to see who's in orientation and connect them with the leaders first, right? I have guys that are going out today for the first day. Okay, great. So any leaders that's training this week, stay on this line and we'll go over the detail of train the trainer, right? I want to give you guys that. But, you know, before I, before we change to, to that, you know, I hope you guys uh, understand the bigger pictures and, you know, as a leader, all you have to do is better yourself by improving your team, right? The name of the game is leadership. By improving them, you're improving themselves. I know it sounds weird, but it's, it's the truth. Like, I became a much better teacher. I have much better influence on my kids now. Like, Leo was, like, barely no A to F. Now he know A to Z. He loves schools. He's, like, competitive as crap, you know. And then Max. Max is like, you know, no one to 20 and things like that. And I'm proud of that, right? It, it, it changed from not listening to me at all, just want to play, to having the right respect and focus at school and things like that. So they made me better because they real, I, I realized how impatient I was with them. And as, as a leader, that's what you get from improving people's lives. You'll get better yourself. And that's the biggest blessing, guys, right? One, once you grow, you increase your financial ability. That's, that's just it. Cool. So I hope I hope that that makes sense for you guys. Cool guys. So that's all I have for you guys. Have a blessed day and kill it today. Andy, you want to wrap up the call? Yeah, you guys heard it here from our CEO and from G Money. You know, these guys have been in the game long enough to share with you guys their experience. So again, you know, I, I challenge you guys to ask more questions in the future because this is so valuable. Um, and for those of you who are, you know, already building a team and doing the right thing, continue to do so. Um, and I hope to see you guys on these calls and running these calls as well one of these days. But thank you guys for being on time. And, you know, for those of you who are taking out leaders, stay on this call for a few more minutes and uh, we're going to do train a trainer. But thank you. All right. Have a good week, guys. Take care. Hey, Dark Side Diego, are you still on the call? Yeah, I encourage you to stay for a train the trainer, bro. I think this is great value that they're about to add to you guys. All right, so we have Diego, we have Vivian taking people out. I mean, obviously you have some uh, experience with Smart Circle already, so I guess um, what I what I would like to do if you want to stay on, great. If not, I understand. Um, but if you can stay on, I can kind of help with some differences, I guess, yeah, between this camp, right? Because it is it is different, right? Because yeah, the, thing about, the thing about Smart Circle is a it's a salary position, right? Or at least it's some kind of draw, right? So it's a little different. One is that the second is the challenge of door to door. Some people's not used to that. They feel it's like beneath them. You know, working at a Costco, it's uh, much easier for them and things like that. So there is there's some differences between um, the two teams, you know. Um, so I, I hope I can touch on that a little bit. Diego, you haven't trained anybody yet, right? No, not yet. Okay. Are you looking Officially. to train? Uh, is your plan to train this week, Diego? Every day. Every day. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, Woo! all right. Great stuff. Do we have, I think Dre said he has more people. Okay. Who is this? Is that Ruben? Hey Ken, do you want to tell you something? Yes. Hey, um, my phone was cutting in and off. It wasn't that I wasn't hearing you. My service is really bad in this area. Okay. Oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> okay, great. As long as you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
who hasn't trained? I, I see two people that, three people that haven't trained before. Is that right? Diego, you haven't trained. Carlos, you haven't trained, right? I, I trained um, Jeff. Oh, you trained Jeff. Oh, good. Good. Uh, I haven't, I haven't trained, trained Ken. Here. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So, like, I actually, I don't want to um, take all the spotlight here because the truth is, when it comes to uh, training in the field, I think Steven, Gio, and Andy has a lot more to give to you guys than, than me. And the reason why I say that is because um, they're, they're out there, so they know how it's like fresh on. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I understand it, but I, um, I might not have the, the right feedback for this, you know, for the moment, if that makes sense. But if you want to talk about psychology and people development, all that, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you guys. I'm very passionate about that, you know. Um, so what do you guys want to know first, instead of me just going over a topic that may not pertain to you guys? What, what do you think I can help you guys with? Andy, we got Andy, we got Steven, and we got Gio. We got some Titans over here. I can share some knowledge for you guys, right? What um, do you feel? What do you feel is the best first thing to instill in their heads? Great. That, that, okay, I can take that one. So I always tell people that if you have these three things, I can make you successful. And I'm that confident. I'm that confident because I, I believe that this business is very simple and that anybody, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And when I say that, I'm not saying because I'm, I'm superior by any means. I, you know, Stefan's not on the call, but he can, he can back me up on the air. When I first started, when I pitched customers, I would sweat and I would shake, right? I'm like so nervous to pitch people, right? And I, I, I just suck, okay? So it's really bad, you know? I think I had four days, I made no sale, right? I was just like a very slow learner. It took, it took a while, you know? It came from work, lifting boxes, working my hands to like trying to smooch people. It's very different, right? They're not boxes. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> so um, it was challenging. So I, I believe that if I can do it and learn the system, I can teach anybody to do it. But they do need these three qualities. So Diego, to answer your question, I tell day one, guys, if you have these three qualities, I can make you successful, right? One, you must have work ethic. You, you must do what's needed, right? And as a matter of fact, I have to work harder than me. If I'm working four hours and I get a sell, you know, you may be better than me one day. But as of right now, I have more experience than you. I know the campaign. I know the numbers. I spend months doing this. So if I spend four hours to get a sell, you got to time that by two. You're going to probably need eight hours to get a sell. I'm very, very realistic, right? Because it's just mathematic, right? When I went out with Stefan, I realized that this guy is really good. He has abilities. He's very suave. He remind me of. Steve, um, Steve Urkel. You guys ever seen a show called Family Matter? Steve Urkel, right? And then, and then he got like into this machine. He became Stefan or Cal or some shit like that. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and and then Stefan, his name is Stefan. So I was like, this guy is smooth. He's like the, he's like the Steve Arkell in the machine, right? Came out all smooth and could get ladies and things like that. So as I look at Stefan, I was like very impressed. And I was like, man, if I can just learn that. At the very least, I can get girls, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, at the very least. <laughs> at the very least, right? <laughs> because at the time, to be transparent with you guys, I couldn't even go to the club and ask a girl to dance. I was so scared, right? I, was, I didn't know how to handle that, right? Uh, rejection was like not something I can handle. So not to go off tangent, the number one thing that a, must, a new guys must know is they must have work ethic. They must do what's needed, one. Two. They must have a student mentality, right? Everything that we, we, we show here can be learned, but you must be able to learn. You must have a student mentality. If you don't have that, I can't give you what I know, so I can't make you successful, right? And lastly, you gotta have a strong why. It ties in with attitude. A person with a strong why always have a great attitude because their goal is so big, it doesn't matter how many no's they get, they're trying to get that big goal. They don't see the objections and the problems, right? So I need those three things. If the new guy don't have that, it's very hard. Sometimes I challenge myself and I say, you know what, if you have two of the things, I'll work with you, right? But at least one, if, if you don't have one of the things, forget it, man, like, like, I'm out. You don't work hard, 
You don't have a, a reason to work, right? And you don't listen. Oh man, it's over, right? <laughs> That's not it. I can't I can't do anything with that. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over because because I can't get you to where you need to be. One, look, if you're not a good student, what's gonna happen is you're gonna if you work hard enough, you'll fall on your face, you'll fall on your face, and you learn from your mistakes and you can persevere, right? Especially if you have a big why, right? But if you don't have a big why and you have work ethic, so you just, you just want to just student, like that person would just stay in orientation all day long and never want to leave you. Like, did you ever have those guys that just never want to leave you? <laughs> right? Because, because one, either A, you're breaking away with some money, right? Or B, or B, like they just, they're not confident enough. They don't have enough big why, right? That's not something you want to work with. You guys follow what I'm saying? Okay, so those are three things. Nothing, nothing like skill. I, I believe skill can be learned. Just like I can go from like not being able to pitch, nervous, shaking in front of the club, right? You know, not to brag, but to the point where I'm like able to, you know, hit my goals when it comes to sales. And I, you know, it's funny. I, I I use sales to get. I worked the sales just like the club at one point. It was like, <laughs> it was like I did the same thing I learned in sales. Right. And then because I, I, I believe that once you learn sales, which is just communication, you can apply that everywhere. And I, I start to do it everything. And I realized it was a transferable skill. Right. So in a way, I don't want to, you know, get get too too much. And I can talk about hours about, you know, how to hit up girls at the club and things like that. Vivian, I'm pretty sure you know how to, you know, do your thing, too. Okay. <laughs> you should run a call on that, Ken. Run a call on that. Right. OK. All right. <laughs> Um, my aunt, the girls run the show over here. I know, I know. So I say, she can give us some pointers, right? How, how to get guys to buy them drinks, right? Mm. <laughs> how, how, how to get in free and get some drinks, right? I gotta learn that. <laughs> awesome. So anyway, so um, Diego asked a good question. Carlos, what do you got for me? So when you start, um, I don't know if it's happening, you guys. You guys get frustrated with your new trainee. What's some things that you guys do to like stop that negative thought and like just like no, this guy's gonna do it. Just keep pushing. Before we answer, can we know why you're getting frustrated at the trainee? Like, what specific thing is the trainee doing that's getting you upset? Because um, so specifically with my trainee, like I would tell him something. And he'll do the complete opposite. And I like at first I would understand, but and then he will keep on doing it, and it would just get more frustrated and more frustrated. And then, to this day, sometimes he still does it, but he's getting better at it. So, so what what is he doing exactly? So when he would like walk in the stores, like he would pitch, and then like he would already start walking backwards, like getting out of the store. And um, I would tell him, and like, I would be like, you have to stand your ground. And he would like, he would keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And like, he's more of a shy guy. So I understand where he's coming from. But I'm trying to push him to like stand his ground, but it's pretty difficult. Can I say something? My two cents on that, Carlos, and maybe the guys in the corner. But when they're, I will go with the trainee, of course, with Jeff, right? And when he scoots back, I'll be right behind him. And he, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> he uses back forward. And he tried to run away. I'm like, my trainee's still scared of you, Mr. Customer. Can you not be too aggressive with him? He's still a baby. And it opens up the doorway. It's like you. I remember you went backwards a lot of times. You were scared of old ladies and all that. So <laughs> let's just remember that. <laughs> And the cool thing about it is all the trainees, they were you. So everybody was us. I remember when Ken took me out and he's like, hit that door. And I'm like, hit that door, that door's a nice house. It's probably a white man. He's like, look at me do weird. I got tattoos. And then he was just like, hit it. Just, you know, just imagine he was you at one point. How many times did I help you close that customer? And I said, that was your deal. But it built confidence. So that's my input, guys. Yeah, can I add something to that? So, 
if I were you, Carlos, I would, this is kind of like off tangent a little bit, but it can relate. Get your new guy to be curious about the business a little bit more. Be curious about hitting the doors. Be curious about making a customer laugh. Be curious about just something, right? Because the moment he's not thinking about the business and he's not curious anymore, he's not going to have passion to do what you do, right? You're so passionate to make sales because you want to get better. You're always like, all right, you're on this call right now because you're curious about getting better on how to train. Get your guys curious on the little things. And then once he understands what he wants, then get him curious to another thing. Okay. I know it is is off subject here, but just uh step by step. When when you give them too much to eat, like hey, get a cell and you're gonna have a successful day, it, it might be overwhelming for them. Just hey, get the customer to talk to you. If he can bite on that, he can bite bigger things later on. So that's my two cents. I just uh, curious, Carlos, um, out of the three things that I said that a new guy need, how many of those attributes does he have? Work ethic, student mentality, and a big enough why or a good attitude, right? Kind of go hand in hand. How many of are... I would say probably two. The work ethic, oh, he has that yeah. his ass off. Um, and the student mentality, he has it, but... Actually, I'll say the why in his worth it, worth it, because his student mentality, he has it, but sometimes it's just like he wants to do his own thing, but I would say. That's good. Yeah, it's good because he has at least the two, and those are, I believe, the two main ones, to be quite honest, you know, so that's, that's good. That's good. I think I would continue to work with him, and I would back up Andy in terms of um, getting him – you, your job as a leader is to get him better, even if it's a little bit, right? So instead of looking at a, a goal of a sell, maybe it's just a matter of talking to a, a mean decision maker and get him to smile, and that maybe his his focus. Make the goal smaller so that way he can win, right? And then and then push the goal to okay, get two bills today or three bills, right? Because it's it's. A lot of time we think, oh, get a sell, that's the win. But the truth is, all this is all about development. So if he's starting off with just, for example, only getting two bills in a day, and then you push him to getting three bills or four bills, that's going to increase his odds of closing. Does that make sense, Carlos? Yeah, let me yeah. add to that because this, this resonates with me so much. When I go out there to the field, guys, the win is not the sell. The win is getting out the car, talking to a customer. It's the small little things. It's getting the customer to smile, talk to me. It's getting the customer to say yes. It's getting the customer excited, right? Those are the little things that's going to get me to, okay, here's a signature. You got to sign. But I think our focus as trainers is like, man, I'm overwhelmed. I got to make my own sales. Plus, I got to train you how to make a sale, right? It, it gets overwhelming. I challenge you guys to take small bites take big goals and cut it down into like what am i going to achieve in this 10 minutes what am i going to achieve in this 30 minutes what am i going to do in this hour right you know steven does a great job getting us down an hour but some of us can't do that we're not at his level so i challenge you guys to take small little bites first. and that's how i'm able to successfully go out there and make a sale because i'm not worried about getting the sale. I'm worried about getting this customer to like me. Right. That's a good point. You know, um, on the because your your team is gonna be very competitive because Steven's competitive. It took us down from the leader. Right? So that's the, and same thing with Gio and your team. So that's a good dynamic, but a lot of time what you have to re realize is that a team that, that's competitive, sometimes if you don't watch it, it becomes counterproductive. It's counterproductive because if if you have the leader that's doing something like a sell an hour like Steven, even when you're doing one cell a day, you feel like shit. <laughs> like, because cause this guy can do it in an hour. You spend a whole day, right? So when you compare that way, you, your new guy is always going to feel like crap. You probably feel like crap right now, right? So it's like the, the best thing I've learned to do when it comes to working in a competitive team, and it's healthy to have a competitive team. Don't get me wrong. I think you should keep doing that. But break it down, right? When I first started sales, I didn't match up my service to fun at first. 
even though I know that was my ultimate goal is to surpass him, because I'm competitive too, I picked the guy, the leader that just got promoted a week before me, and my goal is to beat him, right? And then after I beat him, I size up another person. I keep leveling up until all of a sudden, like, I'm told to toe with Stefan, right, and then kicking his butt. Does that make sense? So going back to the same philosophy is give your, give your person smaller goals to hit because your job as the leader is to build confidence. You can't build confidence if you're measuring up to Steven or yourself. You got to give him something that he can, he can increase at his, at his rate. Does that make sense, Carlos? So he can get some wins and get some, some fire and get some motivation there. Yeah. And also, um, th th this goes for all the new trainers. If you guys didn't get the trainer trainer package on what to cover day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, um, I challenge you to ask your partners for it because it tells you what to cover on day one so you're not too overwhelmed. Yeah, you might have to retrain uh, Jeff again, Carlos, because the package wasn't available because of the pandemic and all that. But I think, Steve, I think email emailed you. If you don't have it, I'll retrain it. We got the package. We took them. We gave Jeff. But um, I feel that uh, just my dissecting of the situation, Carlos, um, I feel that Jeff has all three. Even though he might not be the ladies' man or look like a super closer, but if you're talking about student mentality, it all starts with the leader. And how I feel personally is that it's how you carry yourself. It's how clean your car is. It's your work ethic. How many of those days when you were working, you're training him, you didn't work? You know, how many deals did you show him? You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm so stressed on training. But what I do is I just work normally. There's an invisible guy right here. And he's just watching me do what I do best. Right? So that's basically what it is. As long as you're not stressing. I, when I'm working with a guy, I'm not training. I'm just doing what I do. I'm just having my conversations. Not doing nothing different. I'm not changing nothing. I'm just walking the door and say, "Hey, how you doing?" My normal pitch. So if you think of it like that, your your mentality might change as opposed to being so stressed. Look at how your production was high and how low it became once you started training. You know, because you're stressing about training when you should be just doing what you do best, having fun with it. You're not having fun because you're getting impatient. Maybe because you feel like your deals is not coming up there. But like I said, if you have fun, what we talked about, if you just do what you do best and just do originally what you did to get promoted, everything will come along. Okay? And then also, I just got to deal with my training. Right, Jonathan? We just got to deal? Yes, sir. There it goes. <laughs> also, you know, just to touch on that, sometimes uh, you might not have fun because your money might be not where it's at when you're by yourself. So to a strategy to help that is get a sell first for yourself, focus on you guys later, because it's always good for them to see a sell anyway. Sometimes you have to do that if your money's not right. So you got to balance out that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know how on the airplane, when the attendants come up, she says, what happened in a case of emergency? You got to put that contraptions on whose face first, the cow or you? Do you remember, Carlos? You ever been on a plane? Yourself. On yourself, right? So you got to make sure you're good first. Financially, you got to be healthy. You got to be living, right? And then you make sure your kid's okay. In this case, your trainee. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, Ruben? Or Ru Rudy? You have, you have anything for us? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I'm learning a lot while I'm training. So I'm, I just see myself in my training, and it's crazy So because I could relate with him. He's like, oh, my God. Like, the same thing, he backs away. And I'm like, I know exactly why he's backing away. And to me, he's backing away because he doesn't know the information. And so he's like, man, I, I know how to do this. I just don't know the facts. And I'm like, no, I get you. So we're working on the facts. But other than that, my guy is great, man. Yeah. I, I'm a believer. You know, I'm, I'm very spiritual now, I'm, you know, was Christian like two years ago. I believe that God um, give us our surrounding to make us better. Like it's a trip because I see my kids, I'm like, oh shit, that's what my parents have to deal with. <laughs> that's me, <laughs> right? And then the people that's working with you, they work with you because they, they're very similar to you. I know it's, it's, it's kind of hard to believe, but you connect and you attract people that's like you. So Jeff, it, it's very similar to you, Carlos, somehow. Like you must have 
showed him that somehow that caused him to do the same thing. You may have done that. So the cool thing is you, you, you overcame that. <laughs> so now is your chance now to train him. And when you are able to train him, you become better because it's almost like now you understand at a higher level, right? Because it's almost like you're looking at yourself at a third view, you know, sometimes when you're doing it, you don't really know what you're doing. But then when you step back, you're like, oh, crap, that's what I'm doing. He's doing the same thing. <laughs> that's what I mean by the new guy make you better. It, it's a trip, man. But it's, it's a blessing, the new guys. Cool. Anything else I can help you guys with? Yeah, just I have a question. Um, so as far as planning out territory, you just would do it like how you normally would? Or do you pick maybe like larger streets um, that have more doors to get them more reps? Like how do you guys go about it? I think Dre would be the best to answer that. Um, I can give you my opinion, right? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on how how new this person is, right? How new is this person? I, I guess the better question is: Are they hitting their own doors yet? Are they with you? What's the situation? Yeah. So it's so it'll be uh, day one. Oh, day one. Day one. They just with you. That you don't let the person out of your sight. You what you do is you can, depending on how confident or com uh, comfortable they are, you can let them do most of the pitch or just a liner, right? You can teach start with a liner, see how comfortable they are. If they're like sharp, then they can get all the way to a bill. But they shouldn't leave your site day one, right? Normally, normally a trainee won't leave my site till day three. Till day three. The, re the reason why is because you know I, I trade a little differently. I know Steve may have a different opinion or Andy, but for me, I look at it like. And this is why I tell my new guys too. I was like, you guys only have at most three to four days with me. And you guys have your whole career to be by yourself. Right? So I know it seems like you're not making money or the, the kind of money you want in three days, but you gotta look at it like it's, um, I'm sorry, there's a lot of background noise. Can somebody put yourself on mute? Okay, thank you, Andy. So you gotta look at it like, you know, I have only three days to learn everything I can before I go by myself. It's, I'd rather do that and I encourage my guys to do that versus them doing their own thing and coming back two weeks later on a retrain. One is very embarrassing and two is like, it's basically everybody's time. So I just tell them, look, give me three days, right? Look at it like three days is the foundation you need to be by yourself. I can still support you over the phone, I can support you next to you, but three days with me, side by side, I'm gonna show you everything I know. All right. That's my commitment to you. Right. And then also, I, I, I always want to um, I need to know what the new guys make, too. Right. This is this is this is kind of important. I know you guys didn't ask this question, but money is a big deal when it comes to trading new guys. If you guys don't remember when you were new, money is a big deal. That's why you got the job. Right. Most new guys, if you don't discuss the money correctly, they're going to think you're stealing them. You're, you're taking their money like no joke. If it's not discussed clearly from the beginning, how they make their money, how much, and all that, they're gonna feel that you are taking their sell. Even though you're not, you know that without you, they won't get the sell, but they don't know that. They just think, I could do this myself, but then the A will come in there, freaking A-hole took my money, <laughs> right? So it needs to be discussed clearly, right? So day one, you gotta ask them how much you wanna make in a week. You know, what is your expectation this week? How much do you want to make this week? Every time I ask that, the new guy always tell me what they want to make, like, um, ultimately. I ask them, what do you want to make this week? $1,000. I'm like, oh, shit. And so I'm like, how do I explain to them that there's no way they're going to make $1,000? <laughs> because because if you're making only $1,000 and he's with you, how's that going to be possible, right? So, so you got to explain it. You got to really explain it. If you don't. They're going to feel like they're not hitting their goal and they're going to lose motivation. So how do you explain that? Can somebody help me with it? How, how would you explain it in a way where the new guys know that this is an investment in their future and that you will eventually make a thousand dollars, just not in the first week? How, how would you explain that? Yeah. Is this free for all? Yes. OK. So I would use the analogy of basketball, right? So when you're first starting basketball, what are you learning in the very beginning? The fundamentals. 
And the first three days is pretty much me, the trainer, teaching you the fundamentals. The moment you're done with fundamentals, we're going to start doing reverse layups. We're going to start doing outside three-pointers. We're going to start doing behind-the-back dribbling. But before we do that, we're going to focus on fundamentals, and then we can get creative, and you can start working on your own. So that's how I would position it. Great, great analogy. Do anybody have something else that's not a sports person? Because I would work great for a basketball player, right? But how about some guy don't know how to play basketball? How would you explain that, Rudy? Well, I was personally, I was personally telling them about uh, just my personal experience in the company, about how it's kind of started off slow, but about the third weekend it just kind of just went up. So I just share a personal experience and make them see that it was hard for me as well, and it's just part of the process. Okay, great, great. Because I'm always worried when a new guy, when a new guy has such a big goal the first week, inside, I mean, I explain it right away, but once I get the sale, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure by that day I explain to him in a way where he, it makes sense. Like, you know, because if that new guy don't make the thousand dollars he thought he's going to make that week, you have a high chance of leaving. So if you don't explain that, you, you, you will wonder why you guys leave and don't know why. Okay. Steven, you have something to say about that? Any input regarding the, the money situation? Yeah. This is what I told my guys. I asked them, how much money did you make before? I kind of lead up to it. I said, how much money did you make before? And how was the, the most amount of money you made? And they'd be like, oh, I made 500 bucks or 600 bucks in two weeks or 1,000 in two weeks or whatever it is. And I said, what's the most you've ever made? And they'll tell me. And I'll say, okay, so they'll lead up to that. So I tell them little goals. The first week, you're going to make – our goal is for you to make what you made at your other job, minimum. And our next goal in a month is to make what you make the highest in your in your life. And the sec the third month is where we're gonna hit our new goals. So kind of giving them a little by little stairway, step by step situation, as opposed to having them think they can make a thousand dollars. And I said. If you want to make a thousand dollars, you can, but this is my rule. Spend 10 hours doing these different things. So I think five different things and they're like, that's 50 hours. So at least, you need at least a week, sir. So, and I, and then when I show them, they're like, yeah, you do, you make it so easy. And I told them, yeah, I spent 10 hours on the intro. I spent 10 hours on the product knowledge, I spent 10 hours on the rebuttal, the 10 hours in the flow. So by then they'll know. And, and I like that you do that, Stephen, because it shows that you're just not the greatest out there without any, you know, practice, you know, and a lot of new trainers, we forget to do that. We're, we're on this high horse, like, hey, I'm, I'm the trainer, you know, because I'm good at sales. No, get yourself at their level. Let them know that you experience the same experience they're experiencing so they can feel that they can achieve the work, what you, you achieved. I want to highlight something that Stephen did. I think it's very beautiful. Good job, Stephen. Um, no wonder you have so much people that uh, gravitate toward you and you can build so fast. So when Stephen is starting to associate the new guy's goal one week, one month, here's what you make and here's what – you'll make later. What does that do to the new guys? What is the new guys looking at Steven like? I feel like it makes them look like uh, Steven was once in my shoes. Yeah, Steven's one of their shoes because you have a built-up plan, right? Uh, I'm looking for something else. What, what does it make... If I was a new guy and all of a sudden my leader is telling me you can do this and then I should have to do that and then we'll get here, what what am I – how would I feel about that guy? He's the, my expert. He's, He's the expert. He's the expert. He's like, that. He's like the messiah, right, in a sense, right, in some of this business. Wow, he's going to show me this, then he's going to show me this, then he's going to show me this. He's going to show me the, the way to get to my goal. What a great foundation. Carlos, if, if you have a challenge with um, Jeff not listening to you, paint that kind of picture. Jeff, here's what I'm going to get you at here. Here's what I'm committed to to get you to here. Have that kind of conversation that Steve had with you, and I guarantee you it will be all ears. 
Because he's going to look at you, Carlos, as the person, the stepping stone, the Messiah for him to get to his goal. You know what I mean? That's important as leadership. I'm pretty sure that's what Gio did to you, right? Diego? All great leadership do this. They cast a vision. They're pretty much saying, follow me, and I will show you to the promised land. <laughs> now, the promised land is what they want to make or how they want to live. Does that make sense? That's Let's always get ready, leader. baby. Woo. Right. No, so, so it's funny, though, because... So, so getting rich, that's, that's, um, that's probably 9% of why people's here, but not all. Like there's some people, there's some people like you know, me, for example, I was in it for the skills because I don't know what and how I learned this, but I just realized that if I become more skilled, the money is just the side effect of it. it, it I believe that very early and that really helped me, right? So when I was with Stefan, I was with him four or five days. I didn't make a dime. Even when he was trying to give me money, I was like, no, that's your money. I know I didn't do shit. You're just being generous. I'm not taking that. I'm going to earn it myself, right? But I'm going to invest four or five days. I'm going to absorb everything I know from this man, right? I'm going to beat you one day, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> that's how I was thinking. Does that make sense? So it's, 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 uh, it's very, very important that a leader, you, as a leader, you're able to associate your value in getting your new guys to their goals. Like, how are you gonna assist in that way? That, that's it, that's number one, right? Cool, so I'm glad you pointed it out, Steven, that's powerful. Anybody else have uh, anything that they dealt with recently that we wanna go over? We have about, let's do another 10 minutes, maybe a few more questions, a couple more. Man, it's a lot of good information. I do want to say another thing here. The, the small goals is important. Just like, okay, so when, when you're talking to a customer, you're trying to sell them direct TV, do you give them all your ammo all at once? The answer is no, right? You don't give them the free TV. You don't give them the referral. You don't give them, you know, everything. Same with the new guy, right? There's ammo that we have as trainers that you want to share little by little. You don't want to overwhelm them, okay? And uh, I think I'm just referring back to the packet. So if you have the packet, that's what you should be covering on day one. Nothing more, nothing less. The moment you overwhelm this guy, it, it, we studied this. You know, I've been doing it for so long. Steven's been doing it for so long. If you cover more than what's on day one, they get confused, and then they might not come the next day. <laughs> True, true. Yeah. You, you guys may not know this, but you, you, have, you know a lot. And it's, it's going to be your, if you're a good leader, you're going to like want to share so much. Right? So it's very important that you stick to the script. And I even go as far as this. I don't even talk about day one stuff till I get a sale. Because most new guys, most new guys think like this. Uh, you, you think, well, I mean, I, I heard you're the best, but I'm not going to believe it until you get a sale. Right, so a few things. What happened if you talk too much before the sell? One is you're wasting time. You might not get a sell that day, and then you look really bad, <laughs> right? and then you lose credibility. Right, so be quiet. Just show that the sell is possible, right? And then once you get the sell, and then you can like explain how the sell was done, what technique you used to get the sell off of the packet, right? Because now they're all ears. They're like, oh shit, this actually worked. Let me listen to this guy, right? Versus trying to be like the teacher and give them all this information and wasting time in the beginning, right? My, my first mistake as a leader is I spent about an hour and a half breaking down the system at lunch. It was horrible, horrible. And then I would like sweat my butt off, had to work to like nine hours to get that one cell. And then what I did there is some guys won't come back because I worked too hard. I worked the crap out of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, uh, good point, Andy. I just want to emphasize that. Anybody else have anything um, for me? One more question. Uh, Vivian, how about you? No, nope. everything seems pretty clear so far. Yeah, so I want to. Yeah, I guess I guess the the difference um, between the residential and uh, the door to door. The only difference I see is that. Um, have you done door to door before? 
or have you just done retail? Just just retail. Okay, okay. So the biggest the biggest difference is managing your people because the thing about um, the retail is they're at the shop, they clock in, they clock out, everything's automatic. Plus they have that salary. So I think the type of people is different. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I think there's nothing beats the commission only door to door guys. You know, I, I, I tested many times and the, the hourly people, they water down sales reps. Right. You know, like they, they, they need some kind of cushion. <clears throat> so what you're gonna find is the door to door guys are more like driven. You find you feel like they're more like uh, stubborn. Yeah. Right? And they're, they're somewhat, in your opinion, kind of like more like entrepreneur. They, they might not want to listen as much as the retail guys, because by by nature, because the retail guys they just have hourly, they just be in a work environment, it just kind of culture a little bit. Yeah. Right. So so you can get a different type of group of people. You can get a lot of people like Stephen. You get a lot of people that's gonna challenge you a lot more, and you're gonna have to find other ways to um, manage a team versus a clock in clock out. So I think we have to explore more in details when you have a situation that comes up. But it, it's different. The mentality is different. And the people that you can get door to door, you can get stronger bigger business partner. I can guarantee you on that. You can get some, some right and left hand man that can build an empire with. Right. So yeah, I see like B2B, I feel like like you said, you are finding people that are potential business partners. Uh, just because they have a, a mind of their own and, you know, they bring different ideas to the table and the people in retail more like employees, uh, you know, they're just getting looking to get paid hourly. So, you know, half, maybe if I hire like 10 people, half like eight or nine of them are just looking to get paid hourly. They don't really have that, you know, drive like B2B people. I might get one person that's driven but it's really you know in b2b you if you're doing this is because you know what you're getting into and you know you know that you have to be self-motivated you look most of the individuals that do this are self-motivated individuals if you're not self-motivated individual you're top this is not for you you know exactly because we could push people only so far but they have to be self-motivated they have to push their own selves you know it's like that one saying like you could take a horse to the water but you can't make it drink so you know most of the individuals here i feel like they have that self-motivation they're they're driven exactly thank you Vivian. well said well said you know and i, I end with this if you guys don't have any more questions uh, is that you know the reason why i love this business is because i'm looking for like-minded people like you guys and you guys are doing the same you, you guys are looking for like-minded business partners like I take this very seriously, and you guys should too. If you think, if you really want to see yourself getting, you know, six figures overrides and profit sharing like a Geo and a Steven, because that's what it's about. Like it's, you you find people when you find people that are like minded and that fire you up. Man, you treat them just like as if you're dating that person, right? Like that's why I didn't date for like ten years of my life because I was so committed to my team. I, I kid you not. There's Stefan used to stay in my house for a month. Right. I had a guy that was homeless. I pick up named Myron and take him to work every single day. Right. Because because to me, it's like an investment in people before I you know got into stock and things like that. People was my stock. I look at you. I look at your stats. OK, you got work ethic. You got student mentality. Right. You have a big why. I'm going to invest. <laughs> right. That means you're right with me. We're going to invest some time. We're going to play some poker, whatever you like to do, I'm going to understand you, I'm going to st study you, right? I'm going to get you better. And that yields a lot of dividends for me, man. I've been successful only because I did that. And it doesn't matter if they leave or not. I, 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 you, you, If you guys view it this way, you'll be much happier. Because the biggest disadvantage that people think of this business is people leaving them. I don't think so. If I add value to people and they decided to go somewhere else, all that means is I have a friend that's in a different industry that when we get to the top together, we can do something big. That's how I look at it. So I look at developing relationship and giving value to people because if I can give value to this person and then he becomes successful, man, <clears throat> I'm set. I always have a job. You know what I mean, Diego? You become rich, 
and then this this gym right here I dropped. You know, when when can I be a, a sales trainer in your organization? Most definitely. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Right, Vivian? Do you make it big? Hey. You grow up? I can have a job with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's how I'm securing my own opportunity, right? So that's what it's about. Just find people that's like minded, get them to the next level, and your life will be will benefit from it and on an emotional level and on a financial level. Regardless if they decide to stay and build a long term relationship with you in the company or they move somewhere else and then you'll meet up later in the future. It happened to me many times, but I kid you not. Half of the people that that assemble in these organizations are people that's not even my team. Like PD Wang, for example, was not on my team. I just helped him because he was a sharp guy that asked for help. So I started giving him leads, giving him advice and things like that. And then who knows that 10 years later, we'll like work together. I, I, I didn't know that. Make sense, guys? Oh, cool. All right. So that's all I have for you guys. All right. Love your work. Get better, develop people, and you'll make the most of this opportunity. I guarantee you, okay? Nobody knows how much. No, what, 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 what's, how's that quote go? Nobody cares how much you, you know it. until yeah. they know how much you care. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get it, guys. All right, guys. Take care of your people. Hallelujah. Um, get it. All right, All right, bye. Bye. Have a great day, guys.